Today we're talking about the MiG-21's R3R radar-based missile and how I like to use it on DCS multiplayer. This guide is specifically tailored toward the Dynamic Cold War campaign server. If this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay, so if you're into that, please subscribe. There are a lot of videos that already cover the MiG-21 radar, and I think they do a great job, so I'm going to try to focus on the R3R itself and how it can be a useful missile to use in multiplayer. I will go over some of the basics on the radar, but if you are totally new, I would really recommend watching Tactical Pascal's radar video because he goes into all the extreme basics. So we're going to cover some light things at, at, on the upfront and then we'll transition into some examples of how the R3R missile uh, works. So some basics really quickly. In order to use the R3R effectively, you need to gain an understanding of the radar. First, let's make sure that we have the right information in there. You will want gr ground declutter by clicking this knob and you will want to make sure you turn on IFF. This is an important piece for all of those that use auto start on the MiG-21. This silver button does not turn on with auto start. And if it is not on, then contacts that you interrogate look like an enemy. If it is on, then you should see uh, friendlies or enemies. Once we know the radar is processing information correctly, we need to be able to interpret the data. The radar has two error modes. There is a B-scope and a chase mode. The biggest difference between these two is the Y-axis, and this is super important because I see a lot of people getting tripped up with this. In the default mode, or the B-scope, it means that targets that are located here don't require you to nose up in order to be able to lock them. It just means you need to get closer. Once you lock him, then you are in the chase mode, and then the Y-axis is elevation. So in order to center the enemy in the chase mode, you can nose up or nose down and it'll follow. You do get some altitude information in the B-scope and that shows up on the contact. There are three ways a contact can show up. This means they are co-out, this means they are higher, and this means that they are lower. The easier way to remember is where the stick is pointed. If it points up, they are higher, if it points down, they are lower. You can use this information before you get into range to get your aircraft at the right altitude. This is also a good time to note the azimuth of the radar. As noted by Chuck's guide in this super useful illustration, the radar is asymmetrical in terms of the vertical scan range. You can quite easily lose contacts that just barely drop below your nose. There is some more symbology on the radar itself, which is pretty straightforward. And I'll let Chuck's guide explain that because uh, we can just sidestep that and jump into some examples. If I had to pick one video to show as an example of why the R3R can be useful, it was the one that you just saw. Now we're looking at the first person view and we're going to see what I did. So this Vigan is coming head on with me. I'm about 40 degrees off his nose. And if I didn't have an R3R, I probably would not have been able to shoot this guy and he would have just blown past me and I would have never caught him. And by being able to lock him and to close in with my R3R, I'm able to get into shooting range and even though we're not going directly head on with each other, the missile is able to track and this is the beauty of the R3R. It gives you a lot of flexibility in the type of engagements that you can be lethal in. You don't always have to maneuver yourself to be behind someone to shoot off an R60. You can rely on the R3R to make these short range shots and you can really start screwing up vegans who are just used to blowing past you and staying straight. It keeps everyone honest and it adds a new type of gameplay. This is a very straightforward example, but let's go into some other ones which I also find interesting. This next example is similar to the last one, but first, but slightly different. I'm escorting some big 21 to hit the industrial target. These guys are full of rockets and groms and an F5 climbs up to intercept us. This F5 wants to blow past me and go after the bombers. And if he gets to them, he's gonna tear them up. And it's very neat to intercept and, and to escort with R3Rs because sometimes you only get one shot. And sometimes a lot of times it's actually a head-on. And in this example, you can see that I wait to get into range. And I can see the contrail ahead of me, and he doesn't maneuver, and he's going to eat this R3R in the face because he doesn't respect it, or just didn't ex didn't respect it or expect it, and that's what we see here. So two really clean examples of how the R3R can uh, 
can be a new tool and allow you to play a little bit differently. In this example, I'm chasing two F5s who are, uh, I, I'm on their six and I'm chasing after them. I'm well within range and we're gonna start transitioning into how the R3 are gonna be tricky. So I'm well within range. Um, this should be a lethal shot uh, just for range reasons. And I'm trying to pick up some speed because I know these guys are going fast and they're moving away from me. And I wanna give as, many, as much legs as possible to this missile. This guy sees the missile come and he doesn't do a crazy maneuver and he's able to get away from it. And I keep my eye on the other target and I just slew the TDC and just by spamming the lock button, I'm able to get a lock. And I actually splash the second one while keeping my eyes on the first one. So pretty neat um, with the R3R of the things you can do. But we did see though a limitation of it, which is maneuvering. And it doesn't take too much. Um, what I have noticed is that at higher altitudes, um, especially in head-ons, and especially if you're coming up from under someone, like in this example, you can hit them even if they're uh, going defensive, but your mileage may vary. I would not recommend anybody to take a full R3R payload or weapon package with the MiG-21. You, you definitely need your R60s. But in this example, we're gonna see this F5 that's conning. I'm climbing up under them and I'm gonna let the missile off. And they actually get a warning or they see it coming and they start going defensive. But regardless, the missile hits. So let's talk about other benefits of using the radar. Uh, not strictly the R3R, but just the radar in general. Get a lock here in chase mode. Guy is off my nose, but I can't see him. And I thought the fight was higher up. And I see that the contact's actually sinking very quickly. So I think he splashes guy and he's diving out. And I know he's gonna be on my right hand side and he's super close because I can tell the aiming reticles are very close. So I start looking off to the right and I pick him up. And I, I was already leading into that turn because I had the radar lock and with using the chase mode, I was able to, to keep up with it. And uh, because I'm casting him up against the sky, I'm able to lock him up again. And I'm focused on the missile contrail and he actually shifts over to the right and I'm able to get a splash. So here is an important piece that I wanna talk about, which is the ground clutter. And this leads us to the next example. Ground clutter can make your radar useless. And here I'm chasing a Vigan, as always, chasing a Vigan on the server. And uh, I was thinking about going to go with cannons because I was left to my R3Rs, which in this case is kind of a bummer situation because I, I'm trying to keep my eye on him and then I want to look down on my radar to lock him. And we see that I'm above him now and he's against the ground. And right when I'm about to try to lock him, he just gets lost in the ground clutter. And this radar is not powerful. It's not great. Um, it is useful. Um, but it's not an F-18. So I lost him here um, and I'm not able to, to get a lock and shoot him. Now with these last two examples, I wanna talk about one issue you may run into with using the R3R, which is you're gonna keep your nose on for a long time. And then here I shoot an R3R and I do hit, but what ends up happening is I eat a missile myself and we traded. And we're gonna see the similar thing here now. The R3R is a Fox 1 missile. The F5s on the Dynamic Cold War campaign server have AIM-9 P5 missiles, which are all aspect. So they are able to fire, pull off, and break away while you're sitting there with your nose on trying to give your missile more uh, you know, guidance with your radar. And we're going to see how bad that gets here because I shoot a missile at a pretty close range. This F5 is actually gonna turn off completely. He, he beats my missile and I, I take his missile in the face. So while practicing the R3R and getting the footage together for this, I did notice that I ended up eating a lot more P5s in the face. So it's something to be wary of. I would never recommend to take a full R3R package like you see here. Uh, I typically take two R60Ms and two R3Rs Sometimes I'll even take three R60Ms and one R3R. Um, and the thinking there is that I will get one head on and then I'll switch to iron missiles. It makes it annoying because you don't have, um, you know, you only, you only have ele elevator trim on this plane. But I hope you guys feel inspired to uh, check out the R3R. I think it's a underutilized missile. I think it's a fun missile. 
If you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing and I hope you guys have a good one. Thank you so much.